bullshit. <sighs> hey, hey guys, how are we? <laughs> how are we? We having we having a good Saturday evening. I hope so. So, as you guys know, tonight is the third edition of the Bodiverse for 2023. I almost said for 2022. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. All right. I'm waiting on my guest to get here this evening. I will only be streaming on um, TikTok tonight. And you know what? I just realized she probably can't even comment. So, let me see if I can fix this real quick. There we go. Let me fix that real quick. All right. So now, hopefully she can comment because I know that, I know that she's been uh, dying to get on here tonight. We are going to talk with the Green Witch. The Green Witch, excuse me, said that wrong. So not only is she one of my favorite creators, but <laughs> I want her to be one of y'all's favorite creators too. So I'm waiting to see her pop up here. Let me see if I can actually search her out. <laughs> the comments are going so fast. Oh my God. So I don't. All right. I'm waiting to see her on here. So tonight we're going to talk to her. It is actually her birthday. So I want you guys to make sure that you follow her if you don't. Um, I also want you guys to know that we're going to talk about some interesting shit tonight. And we're going to have to like carefully skirt the comments a little bit. Let's see if I can find her here. Why won't it ever let me search anything? I don't understand that. I don't understand. It pisses me off. Like, I should be able to search out who I want to be on here with me, right? Right? All right. Well, I'm waiting for her to pop in here. And the comments were going so fast. If she did pop in, hopefully she'll say something else. But she should be here any minute. And, yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about divination. We're going to talk about, thank you for all the gifts, love. We're going to talk about, <laughs> I'm just trying to grab to like see if she pops up here. Um, we're going to talk about divination. We're going to talk about death work. We're going to talk about the doomsday clock because I've had several people ask me about it and several people ask me in both of my lives today. So we're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about those things. There we go. Thank you, Kathy. I pinned your comment there. All right. So when she pops up here, I'll add her in. But in the meantime, while we're waiting, I want to talk about some interesting things going on. Um, I have, I'm just going to start talking about this and when she pops in, I'll, uh, I'll pull, pull her on here. One of the things that I want to talk about is I've noticed lately and uh, y'all, y'all, oh, I'm in love with you too. I have seen so many people, so many people talking about the Schumann lately and I keep getting tagged in all these videos because if you guys watch me at all, you know that I talk about the Schumann. I follow it almost religiously. I follow the solar flares because all of those things, all of those things affect us. They all affect us. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Thank you so much. All of those things affect us, right? There she is. If it'll let me. Okay, there we go. All those things affect us, but it's a scientific thing, okay? When she comes in, I'll pull her up side by side here so you can see her pearl little face. Uh -huh. There she is. <laughs> I'm trying to see. Hey. Why can't I see you? There we go. Now, why is this doing this? Mm -hmm. Why is it being this way? I don't know what I just did. I don't know what I just did. <laughs> why can't I just? Why can't it just be like two? Why can't it just be like side by side? 
What is going on? I'm not sure. I'm not going <laughs> to touch anything else. I'm not touching anything else. That's fine. That is fine. How are you doing tonight? Hey, girl. I'm fantastic. How the fuck are you? <laughs> I'm like, so good. Like, I'm here, like, why can't I get? You know what I mean? Like, I want you right there. That looked really bad. I don't I'm know. Sorry. It won't let me. Let it me won't give me an option. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's either that or nothing. Or, or nothing. Son of a fuck. Okay. All right. All right. We're just gonna go straight cuss mode. No, y'all don't want to see my notes. Y'all don't want to see my notes. <laughs> is what it is it is what it is so we're just gonna do the i don't know fuck it <laughs> oh, it is what it is yeah there's it is girl, what it is. you guys we were waiting on her so how are you doing was trying to make her big i'm fantastic how's your birthday been it's been amazing. <laughs> uh, I went out with my family. We went out to um, eat hibachi, have fun with my son. Um, have me a friend girl over here who's supporting me. Yeah, um, y'all should go follow her. <laughs> so, I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna tag her name down there, but in the comments. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but other than that, my birthday has been amazing. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yours look amazing as well. <laughs> as always and stuff so <laughs> what is the topic for tonight what are we discussing tonight and what, what 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 are we trying to get our fans like some information about like all right so i want to talk about you first that's why i was trying to get you bigger so i want to okay. talk about you a little bit so i want to i want to hear like I want them to know why you do what you do like what got you into this how long have you been practicing like some people were raised in it, some were not. Like Thank I want to, I want to know. I want them to know you because I've watched. I I nerd in your lives. So when you're on live, sometimes like I'll watch you read. I and one of the things that made me a big fan of yours is that you're not a sugar coater, <laughs> but you're not like a dick either. You know what I mean? Like when you're reading for somebody, I mean you're gonna tell them, okay, you're you're being stupid, but you're not gonna like. I've seen some readers that I'm like, why are you doing that? Like they're so hateful to people. I'm like, why are you, why are you doing this? Um, I, I adore the way that you read, that you're upfront and real with it and you don't try to sugarcoat shit. Um, mm -hmm. and then I love your videos too. So I want them to know about <laughs> you. And then I had a lot of people ask about the, the doomsday thing. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit and then I want right. to talk about divination and I want to talk about some paranormal stuff and then, uh, we can totally talk about death work too, since you said you wanted to talk about that. So I'm down. We're into that. Okay. So great. So this, this is crazy. Things. So um, how I look at my journey is, is very weird. So how I'm going to say this might come off kind of odd, but this is just how I look at my journey personally and put it out there. So how I look at my journey, I probably started this journey, I would say um, back in 2014, 15 was mourned and I think on that journey I was more on my conscious journey my work my woe journey okay. and um that's when I was more into um discovering more more of my um heritage of, you know civil rights and getting deeper and deeper into Kemet and all that which is um something that pushed me into my spiritual journey um because all of a sudden um, I started seeing ads about herbs and stuff like that and it pushed me to a spiritual journey to where I was homeless and that's when I went viral on TikTok um okay. and throughout that journey I've learned so much about um just the basics but I've learned so much about my psychic gifts I've learned so much about energy work um and it was um and it's kind of like I was lit <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was I like, like, I know I can do it. Like, okay. I want them to see your beautiful face. And I'm like, you're like this big. Great. I don't like it. Okay. So we got I'm it. Sorry. We got it. Yes. Um, so it was kind of like I was led. I was just being led, um, going through different um, trials and um, bumps in the road um, throughout the time. And something just said, put myself out there. Um, when I started tarot reading, I wasn't even on TikTok. Um, Something just said, get back on TikTok. But um, I was 
um, going through my shadow work and I started tarot reading myself, start doing more shadow work, start practicing um, her magic, start uh, meditating more, um, scrying. I started getting more into um, working with deities, um, deities I can say I could probably work with is the Kati. Um, I got more into um, Lilith. Um, and I've also gotten more uh, deeper into my Egyptian deities as well to where it started um, coming to me quick. And also, this and this is something else that I'm also into because I'm a big nerd. I'm a big nerd. I'm just going to put it out there. I have a lot more other talents. Okay, I'm a big nerd. I'm a geek. I love anime. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm a Harry Potter fan. I'm a, I'm a Twilight fan. So I See, like all of this explore. stuff. I'm like, you don't know. Like, we're best friends mm -hmm. now. <laughs> this is what like, I'm, I'm a complete nerd and so I like to um, explore like I watch the history channel so I like to same, um, explore same. like yeah I like to watch um, different things about different uh, ancient civilizations mm -hmm. um, aliens and stuff like that I done read several books um, they're around here I read several books um, including alien races what was a gift from the stars Ooh, um, that one okay yeah yeah, yeah, I got that. One. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing, and, and you and it really drags you in. Um, but and I'm watching. I started um downloading Gaia. I had a whole subscription with them. Um, Spirit Science on YouTube. Start all that, and it's just just gaining all this knowledge. And so I'm also on that side to where like I'm also learning about the universe, chakras, and this that, and the third. Mm -hmm. And it just Oh, it's just everything just makes sense after a while. It's just yeah. it's just everything makes sense. And it, it's crazy. Um, so all this pushed me to putting out my content on just making jokes. I have dark humor, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Like humor, <laughs> but it's, it's, but I like dark I have a little dark humor. So I like, you know what? This spiritual journey is getting on my nerves. I got At the end of the day, it's like I started realizing, reflecting back, like from the last year, reflecting back, I started realizing that um, this is how I am on myself. Like my spirit team is hard on myself. So even in my readings, how hard I go on them is how hard I go on myself. I tell them I'm, a, I'm my own coach. So I would have a, a spirit team. I will work with deities who are hard on me. OK, mm -hmm. um, even if that means going into darker entities and stuff like that, that some people are probably not ready for. Um, and a lot of people might not be ready for that. Um, but right. it led me to know that it's OK to accept my shadow side, my higher self. And if y'all are if y'all know much about that, it's pretty much just, you know, like you go versus a better you, like an old you versus better you. And me and that heifer gets the fighting every day. Okay. Sometimes she wins. Okay. <laughs> she knows how to tussle. But other than that, <laughs> she knows how to tussle. You're going to make me snort laugh. Like it's going to happen. I'm sorry. When it happens, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, she, she knows how to tussle. And you know what? She's strong. Because that's that that she 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 she's me she's a part of me so like that's why I have to say like if people want to get there yeah so just I was amazed at this journey and so even with the paranormal I was just everything throughout my life um, even as I grew up as I grew up the uh, old house was stated um, when I was like in kindergarten. Um, it was an old house, okay? Um, like right now, this is an old house. And even as I get older, I realize that energy still stays, you know, even residual energy. And sometimes we can't help it, you know. People rebuild houses. Some people just don't cleanse it. Um, some people probably don't believe it. I stay in Mississippi and stuff. You ha I have to cleanse the space. Oh, but yeah. even then, you know, lost. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I was going you know, to ask you, like I'm just that, huh? Oh, I'm sorry I'm to interrupt you. I was going to ask you, like, where, where, where did you grow up, and like, where are you now? Um, I grew up. I'm in Jackson, Mississippi. I've been here. Uh, I grew up here. I stayed in a small town in Gluster for ten years, and then I moved back here. Um, one son. Um, not married. So I was literally <laughs> right by you in August and didn't know it. For real? In Georgia? Yeah, I I came and stayed in downtown Jackson, and I didn't even know you were there. Really? Yes. Oh my god. Well, yeah. Yes. I say, uh, 
Well, I say Jackson, Mississippi. Well, okay, well, I need to start putting that like on my post or something like that. Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi. Um, so um, I stayed here my whole life. So it's it's energy here. It's there very it is. it's a lot of energy here. Um, I'm trying oh, yeah, to remember the name of the hobby. I'm trying to say the I name of the cemetery we stopped at. It's so okay. So you know where the capital is? Where down like downtown the capital is? If you go west out of town. Like, after you get to the end of downtown, there's, like, this whole area where, I mean, there's all kinds of buildings that, that are boarded up. And they're, like, it almost looks like an, uh, she would be able to tell me, but, like, we nerded around that cemetery forever. And, I mean, you could tell no one had been out there in a long time. Um, like, the grass was grown up. And then... Um, there were a lot of graves that were, I would say, mid 1800s. If I, because I looked, we looked at a few different cemeteries, and there was one we wanted to go to, and we weren't gonna have time. But this one was like one of the oldest ones there, um, and a lot of the graves had actually caved in. And like, it, I mean, it was it was sad, but um, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous cemetery, gorgeous cemetery. But you could just feel like when you pulled in, how high everything was, the grass and stuff, and mm -hmm. it was just sad it was so like we got out of the car and I was like I'm gonna cry like oh my god because there was these just phenomenal graves it was so beautiful like we spent like the whole afternoon out there like Jackson made me sad like it made me so sad because it's such a beautiful god it was so beautiful so beautiful there and like mm -hmm. to see that like nobody's there I was like where's everybody <laughs> where's everybody <laughs> wow I'm trying to see where what you're talking about but based on like <laughs> I look at grades like that all the time. So I'm trying to see. <laughs> oh, said the capital, like, and I'm trying, you say the capital, and it's like downtown. I'm thinking yeah. you're probably down the street. Yeah, 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 like you're down the street from me. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you're literally down the street from me. Yeah, she was right down the street. That's what we were over here thinking. Like, I got a I'm like, now I'm going to look. Now I'm going to look because I can, tell you exactly, yeah. I can tell you exactly where I was. Um, I'll let you talk a little bit while I look this up. <laughs> she was in the family. Oh, that's crazy. That is crazy. You're so beautiful. Hey, this. I'm like, show me the show me the show me the picture of it. When was she here? Um, so I was there in August. Um, I'm in front of this, so I'm on I'm on Google because I'm like, all right, let me see. Okay, I don't think that's it. I don't think this one's it. I'm like, if I could just see the front of it, if I could see the entrance, I would know that that was it. Okay, this isn't it. Okay, so. So you've been on your spiritual journey for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Too long, girl. Too <laughs> long. <laughs> Let's Still see. Wrong. So how have you found TikTok to be towards you as a as a creator, as somebody in the spiritual community? Mm. I, I've been I've been asking a lot of people this because I'm finding that it's uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it's interesting <laughs> to a lot of people. Um, yeah, have you had have you gotten any haters yet? Oh, <laughs> oh we have those <laughs> like every, day. Like, oh. every day. We have we have those. Um, yes, the shadow banning is hectic. Um, and sometimes it's, it's, it's very um, toxic, too. Sometimes I have to step away from the app just to recollect myself because sometimes I'll get so dragged in it because I'm like, nah, it's not adding up. It's, it's not adding up. But, um, yeah, as of like the con like as of just the app itself, the content, oh, oh gosh, it's, it's been amazing. I met a lot of amazing content creators on here. Um, mentored a lot of people. I've met a lot of people. Shared a lot of experiences with people. 
um, that I've met around. I've um, had a big influence on a lot of people's lives who've also had a lot of big influence on me. And so I can't say that this app is amazing, you know, <laughs> besides, you know, the other side of TikTok that we're not going to talk about right now. It's an amazing app. And um, yeah, um, I just wish there'll be more a little bit less harsh on the spiritual community because like I really don't know why a lot of people are getting like banned and I kind of been noticing that so it's 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 kind of weird to me so I wish they can be just a little bit more on the spiritual because I, I think that our content is like just as amazing as others you know yeah yeah, yeah. I, that's one thing that I don't I don't understand either um that that's one thing it's like it doesn't matter what you do you can't I mean I already know you can't please everybody and I look at it like this like when you get haters like okay I'm doing something right <laughs> I'm getting haters on here but I I've um I've seen that a lot too with the shadow banning and then there's a few other creators bigger spiritual creators that um I don't get involved in the drama and the bullshit because I'm like y'all I don't have time i I don't care. You know what I mean? Like y'all, y'all do over here and I'm going to do over here, but I see them like get in arguments with people and then they dox them and all this stuff. And I'm like, y'all like, that's the thing that irritates me the most. And right. I mean, I have a 16 year old and a 23 year old and I mean, you have a kiddo and like, I don't think people think about that aspect of it. And mm-hmm. it, it's kind of scary sometimes. And I don't care for that aspect, but at the same time, I'm like, I see content all the time. And I'm like, that's terrible. That's terrible. And it's got like 200,000 likes. Like, what <laughs> What in the world? Like, no community yeah. guideline, but I like to know nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy and stuff. So I wish they'll ease up on that. Uh, I wish. But we know that that's <laughs> They won't. <laughs> they won't. They won't. It's just going to get ridiculous. It's just going to get ridiculous. Uh, yeah why can't we all just get along exactly sarah exactly (laughs) yeah that's Mm -hmm. that's one thing somebody said please don't ban the spiritual yeah there's exactly i just saw that yep yeah there's been a lot of talk about them banning certain keywords and so on and i know facebook did a big thing i don't really fuck with facebook that much anymore but like you can't put uh you can't do hashtags for like tarot or astrology or anything like that on facebook if you do like it'll tank your content and i'm like that's that's kind of some bullshit, but okay, you know, whatever. I'm just not gonna post there. I I get it. You don't want my money. Cool. Bye. You know. <laughs> See ya. But hey, hey, what's against us? Like, what's against us? I don't know. Like, okay. wait, what's against like, us? Right. <laughs> you don't I want me to see how still- shitty your energy is? Gotcha. <laughs> I don't want to see it either. <laughs> it's like. I don't know. I guess because people tell too much in people's business, or I guess they think tarot's a scam in some cases. Hey, that's their beliefs. That yeah. has nothing to do with us. All right, that, and that's the thing about a belief system, okay? Just because you think that your beliefs are better than ours don't mean that you have to knock out ours just because you feel like what we do is nothing but reading cards or yeah. lighting yeah. candles or doing dumb stuff like that. And I feel okay. like... <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Mary Moon said, "Because spiritualists cannot be controlled." Uh, mm. Yeah, right there, that right there. <laughs> Thank you, book a reading with me. Thank you so much, baby. Yes, yes, yes. That makes me happy. Link in my bio. So the side, uh, so like the thing about it is like I um with the divination thing with tarot since we're talking about yeah, tarot, let's move into that. I want to tell you where I was. I found the cemetery where I was. Where? Cedar Lawn. By the zoo. Oh, by the zoo. Uh-huh. No. Okay, Damn. we thought you were uh. <laughs> nah, Yeah, I had to look. Like, I was like, I know it was right down by the zoo. So, yeah. Cedar Lawn right mm-hmm. by the zoo. That's like a West Jackson. So, yeah. No, I'm like... <laughs> I'm out like, north, I'm like north, north a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, so, when I yeah, come back through, also- I'll let you know. And we can go to lunch or something. We can go nerd around a cemetery. <laughs> Please let me know. I, I know exactly what cemetery you're talking about. It's right there besides, what was it, a Freemason church? And then it was like Yes, 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 yes. Or, mm-hmm. Yep, I know exactly where you were. I, I never expected them to have the grass, so I had to usually have a well-maintenance. 
Yeah, it it was it was bad. Like and really it was noticeable when you pulled in and then I mean back where a lot of the graves are there's a lot of pine trees and stuff or cedar trees so the grass doesn't really grow anyway but yeah it was almost waist high in some areas I was like what the hell like but I mean it is what it is it is what it is you know I get it so the, the, old, the, it's gonna get better down here it's gonna get better down <laughs> it's, it's, but, it's um, beautiful but, the whole town is the it's beautiful there Absolutely. It, it's a nice town. It, it's, a, it's an amazing town. It, it, it has a lot of history. Um, oh, yeah. But. <laughs> so I'm curious, do you find that you're drawn, like when you're looking at places to stay there, do, are you drawn to the older places versus the newer places? Um, yes. <laughs> Spiritually, I am drawn to older places because of the spiritual realm in this case like this is the perfect apartment for me to do work in some cases um because it has nice hardwood floors it's not like plaster floors you know it's real mm -hmm. hardwood floors so if you just know about that type of spell where it's really nice it, it's easy to clean up yeah yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what um, i've got in my house <laughs> it's hardwood and, uh, but other than that, like, yeah, I am drawn to certain locations because, um, yeah, they are old. Yes, I like spooky. Yes, I always think I'm going to see a ghost because I always <laughs> want to because I'm the type of person who wants. I want to know who it is, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it, in some cases, it's just, it's just a very old town. It's a, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's a very old city. So, yeah. a lot of energy here. So, other than that, I'm, I'm drawing pretty much everywhere in a good way though in a good way in a good way so what drew um, you so what drew you to cards is that what's your let me ask you this first what's your favorite divination what's your favorite type of divination that you do music divination oh yes <laughs> music divination and because I do look I have to and it be, the, it be the weirdest time so you just listen to music and all of a sudden just a, a playlist or a song pop up that ain't on your playlist or never used to be on your playlist and it's like you know who that energy is you know who that person is like or maybe spirit trying to tell you something and it's like but it's it, I like that divination it's mm -hmm. amazing I love I you said it. that because a lot of times when I'm talking about divination um people think it's just cards and pendulums I'm like oh no like there's pendulums so different yeah. so I was gonna ask another question and it just went right out of my Head, so it is what it is. It'll come back. Um, what drew you to cards? And do you prefer tarot or oracle or both? Oh, I prefer both. But okay. um, what drew me to cards, like I said at the beginning, um, just my instinct drew me to cards. I'm gonna be honest, I was scared, scared <laughs> out my mind Why? to touch a tarot, uh, touch a tarot deck. I really? said, Are you sure? Spirit was like, Yes, I said, Are you sure? Yeah, and it's like, um, my first oracle deck was um, the Starseed Oracle deck. Ah, and my I love first that. tarot deck was the Modern Witch um, tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And from there, it started growing into um, other decks um, <laughs> as time went by. Um, and by the time that came up is when um, Spirit was like going live to tarot read. Mm -hmm. And I was scared at first because I was used to reading only my energy. And yeah. so... After a while, Spirit was like, now you're ready to read other people's energy. So, <laughs> boom. <laughs> and um, it took me a while to realize that um, a lot of my messages, I also channeled a little yeah. through messages. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, pre uh, pretty much. And um, started off with Oracle and got into Tarot, but I prefer Oracle more. Okay. You know, Tarot is more. Um, when I'm trying to get deep into the site, uh, deep deep into the situation, deep deep. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. I'm not. I I don't really read tarot. I read oracle. I have so I ha I keep buying tarot decks, and I'm like, I don't know why, because I don't ever read with them. Like they sit there. Usually, I end up giving them away. But um, but yeah, I've always loved tarot. Like I've had I had tarot decks as a kid and things like that. Never ever ever read with them ever. Mm -hmm. so yeah oracle is by far my favorite but mm -hmm. i think it's because 
I think what makes me like Oracle the most is because each deck is for something different. And so like, I'm okay, well, you want to know about like your love life or, you know, is this person being a fuck? Is he cheating on me? Whatever. Okay. Let me grab these decks. And, okay. I want to know about like career and okay, let me grab these decks. And so I think that's what I like the most about those, but, but then it also gives me a problem. I have like 50 decks at this point. I'm like, I really legit have a problem. <laughs> I need an adult to take <laughs> away my wallet. Like I need an adult, but <laughs> so aside from music, are there any other interesting weird forms of divination that you do that you like or one that you want to learn? Okay. Um, pendulum, of course, pendulum di uh, divination. Um, I, um, want, I want to learn more on, like, I want to get more really into the Ouija board, you okay. know, but I mean, really that's, that's, that's just me. I know how weird it sounds, you know, I just no, never tried it, no. never tried the Ouija board and it's, it's, it's crazy as it sounds, I never did. Um, but that's what I want to try. Okay. So, um, but other than that, um, the pendulum and a uh, lipple mint, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that's um smoke, y'all. So like, you know, um, I I like a lot of insects in here. So mm -hmm. lipomancy is definitely something that I would go to when I'm just trying to um, you know, not really trying to move too much, but at the same time trying to pay attention to maybe you know what spirit trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So when when you're doing when you're doing that when you're reading the smoke, um. Do you just sit and watch it or do you snap pictures? I sit and watch. It depends on what I'm actually doing, but I'll sit there and watch because usually the message is in my face. I can't catch it at that time. Like I, I don't sit there and like record it half the time. Mm -hmm. um, I did at the beginning mm -hmm. to test it out. Yeah, to test my self out to make sure that I'm not crazy. Like I saw what I saw, you know? <laughs> right. And once I kept yeah, and once I kept doing it, I realized, oh, okay. So I don't really need that much evidence. Right. I know. Like I don't know. It's stuff so yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I love that. You're probably one of the few people that I that I have talked to know personally. Most people don't know about smoke reading. They don't know that it's a thing. They're like, well I just sit and watch the fire. I just sit and watch the smoke and I'm like you do divination. <laughs> like if you see shit in the fire, if you see shit in smoke, if you should sit in the water, like you're practicing a form of divination. Like you're doing it. So I love that. I love that you do that. I love smoke reading. It's been one of my favorite things for a long time. I, I grew up with a, a dad who uh, we did it all the time. Like we did it all the time. We were camping and he'd be like, Oh yeah, you see this and this and this. And so I'm always like, I blame you for me being weird. I blame you for me being weird. <laughs> but I can't it's different. Yeah. There's nothing like sitting there. It's relaxing, like, because you have to focus. You have to still your breathing. Like, you can't be like, oh my God, you know, it goes everywhere. So you have to sit and focus. I think for me, with my brain always doing 90 fucking things at the same time, like making myself stop and focus helps me more in the long run than anything. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you're that way too, but I love having to just. Thing. So yeah, campfires are fantastic. So let me pull this back up here. I had all my notes up because everybody was wanting to know about the doomsday clock and uh all this other stuff. I got tagged in like so many videos today and I know I mentioned it to you because I was like, we're going to, have to talk about it. Um, so some of you guys were asking about the 24th of January and I actually had to look it up. I'm like, what's the 24th of January? Like, because astrologically there's not really anything. And so mm -hmm. on the 24th of January, what I found was that's when they're updating the doomsday clock which tells us mm -hmm. how close we are to self-annihilation, basically. So I am curious to see what they update it to. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the history of it. It's on Wikipedia. It's on Google. Like, y'all can Google it super easy. But one of the things that I did find very interesting, aside from the fact that they're going to update it on the 24th, is that it has not been updated since 2020. And so I'm really curious how close it's going to be because it's like a hundred seconds to midnight. Like we're like that. So 
I'm really curious because they're going to take into effect like the Ukraine war. They're going to take into effect um, nuclear weapons, um, climate, like all of this stuff. I'm like, man, what? <laughs> like what? But the fact that we've had all of these things happen in the last three years and it's never been updated, that surprised me. With COVID and everything, they never updated it. It surprised me. But, I mean, I guess COVID technically isn't self-annihilation. But, yeah, it's it surprised me. Oh, I'm trying to see, oh, I'm trying to see like, okay, so they haven't updated it. So it's just kind of like they're not keeping up with this so-called doomsday. Now, I, 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 I would think if you had something like that, you'd update it every year. That's my yeah. way of thinking. But I guess it hasn't it been. I, I guess that when it was originally done in 1947, it was set at seven minutes to midnight. And then it was moved back to 17 minutes to midnight in 1991. And so they don't always update it every year. I'm like, I would think that would be a thing you'd update every year. So you're freaking people out. So that's what cracked me up. I'm like, so everybody's freaking out about this. And I'm like, but it doesn't really change anything. It's just a scientific look at all of the uh, dumpster fires that are going on right now and how much closer it is to somebody going, you know what, fuck this and slamming the button somewhere. We're always on the verge of that. Like, we're kind of always on the verge of that. I don't, I don't know how I mean, feel about it, but I'm like, we're kind of always on the verge of that. I grew okay, up so on the verge of that. You grew up on the verge of that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like, because how I feel about this is like, I don't know if anybody would probably agree with me, but it's like, kind of like, um, you're relying on sor on a source that nobody really just follows. And it's kind of like, things change. You know, pr yes, predictions happen. You know, mm -hmm. people predict things. They do happen. But in some cases, I feel like, you know, maybe time changed, maybe something changed to where maybe that prediction might not have um, happened. Right. Happen at the time or, or might not happen at all. You know, I feel like the future can always change. Yeah. So I, even with a minor I, prediction like a doomsday, like, you know, with that, it can always change in some cases, but it's nothing to really rely on. But mm -hmm. To pay, you know, but still pay attention to because you are right about the COVID. And even then, they came out with the monkeypox. Mm -hmm. um, and that right there scared me because I'm like, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I mean, and, yeah. Um, the recession, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, it is a lot. It is a lot. But it's like, that's, I, don't, I don't really think it's something to like, then the zombie, yes, the zombie virus that they that they revived. That's I that's know, crazy. Right? It always so, cracks me up. I'm like, please stop fucking shit. with shit. Please stop no, fucking with shit. Probably, that's probably why it stopped because they kept messing with. Me, <laughs> and now, like you know, just stop, just stop, just stop. Because now we don't even yeah. know what's gonna happen. Yeah, a bunch of people that's were saying that um, it's a way of keeping people in fear, and I completely agree because. TikTok will take something and fucking run with it like nobody's business. <sighs> like the whole, I don't know if you've seen the videos on the whole Schumann thing. Like I talk about the Schumann all the time. I've watched it for years and I, somebody tagged me in a video where this person was like, oh, there was a blank part. And so we had a timeline shift and I'm like, no, it means their instruments were out. Like back up, hold on, back up, like back up. I'm not saying we didn't have a timeline shift, but at the same mm -hmm. time, like their instruments go out because they have rolling blackouts where it's monitored. It happens a lot. It pisses mm -hmm. me off because I'm like, I need my thing. It doesn't mean that we completely shift the timelines. And so I keep getting tagged in these videos and I'm like, y'all, like it, it's literally just, it's scientific. Like look at the scientific shit first. Like look at the logical stuff first and then we'll freak out in a minute. Like we'll freak out in a minute. So it cracks me up. I'm like, y'all. Calm down. So I actually thought I was like, wow, is there like some really big prediction? Like wh what the fuck's going on? So when
So glad that we talked about it because I know we can talk about it. I'm like, yes, yes, I'll talk about it. Yep. I feel like they can keep us scared and hating each other. Then they will be always be stronger than us. That's exactly right. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. That's that's exactly why, right. That's why I agree that like uh, whoever said earlier that if they can keep us in fear, but they can't control people that are in the spiritual community because I, mean, I don't know about you. I'm sure you kind of feel this way with some stuff because I because I've watched some of your I may have watched all your videos. Okay. I might be like a little fangirl a little bit. I'm sorry. So whenever you agreed to come on, I was like so excited. Anyway. Anyway. So um, <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that I've any spiritual person that's been in the spiritual realm for a long time, you don't really feel like you live in the norm. It's almost like you are kind of disconnected, like you're here, but you're not like you're in this bubble still operating in the norm. So you go in and you see all these people that still care about some of this like little mundane shit. And it's not that I don't care about little mundane shit, but I don't care about little mundane shit anymore. Like I don't give a fuck how my yard is mowed. I don't care. You know I mean? Things like that. And so when I look at things like this, I'm like, okay, so this is a bunch of scientists. This is a bunch of, you know, people freaking out about stuff or whatever. I don't see a lot of things behind it. Like I, I don't, but I, but I agree that that's kind of why they're cramping down, clamping down on all the spiritual aspects of things and why they're clamping down on TikTok Cause I get tagged in all those stories too. And that one actually does bother me a little bit. Because they're using it in like, and I kind of, I'd love your opinion on this too here in a second. Because um, they're, oh, well, China can use the app to get all of our information or whatever. And I'm like, bitch, China can use anything to get information on anything. Just like we do it. We do it to other countries. They do it. They do it to us. Like everybody gets information on everybody. They don't need TikTok. And, mm. but TikTok is one of those few places where you can go live immediately. You can post videos immediately. So suddenly people are seeing all the things that are happening immediately and they don't Mm -hmm. have to watch the news and they don't have to go through all these other things and so now I see all the stories where they're clamping down you know this whole state is clamping down on it that whole area I'm like "Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm." Mm. so Mm. now now you're fucking with my freedom of speech and I don't care so I don't know if you've seen all of that yet have you no I, I really haven't but I have been seeing it a lot on TikTok And so I'm like, me, I'm more to myself. So it's like, mm, I have it. However, it does sound kind of crazy. It sounds sounds, sounds pretty crazy and stuff. So no, I'm not really just into the mundane (laughs) uh, mundane stuff either. (laughs) No, ma'am. So yeah, they can can, can, um, have that for me. Yeah, they can have that. (laughs) So... Our eyes are being open to a lot of the things they don't want us to know about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I agree. I agree. There's a lot of stuff on TikTok. Oh, I, I fall down the damn rabbit hole all the time. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I've been sitting here 20 minutes. I'm like, I got to get up and do things. But I just go <laughs> down the fucking rabbit hole on TikTok. Like, I got to stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let me close out of these. All of these other notes up here. So what would you rather talk about? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you your choice because you gave me a couple of topics that you wanted to talk about. So I'm going to let you pick. Oh gosh. Ah, <laughs> so good. I would like to, okay. So just me, um, I guess I like to get more into like the, the I guess the paranormal. Oh, um, yeah. That's, that's, that's the big thing for me right now. And um and what I have been realizing about the paranormal, basically. And I have been journaling about it lately too. Um, about my experiences with the paranormal. And it's so, like I was like, tell, tell. <laughs> it's, it's like, um, what 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 I found out. So, besides the cl- the Claire's, and if you don't know what the Claire's are, yeah, y'all, y'all, you know, Claire audience, Claire going, you know, um, and it's like hearing them and experiencing them. Um, 
Personally, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I've been trying to connect. I've been connected to the dead for a long time mm-hmm. since I was a baby, and um, it's a lot about the paranormal that I thought I understood. That I'm now starting to awake to now understanding. Um, like for instance, um, the reason why I probably say the paranormal means a lot is because probably where I'm located is honey. A little bit. Yeah, you know, I'll say a little bit because I know um, my friend here with me is also very um, intuitive as well. Um, and it is an old lady spirit up in here. So it's just connecting to her spirit has definitely opened the door for that. She's de- she's very sweet. She's very sweet. She loves my son. Uh, she, she, takes, she loves my son. Um, watches good. over him. Um, she's a great spirit. I'm not going to lie. It's some ugly main spirits that come waltzing up in here sometimes. Other people's energies. Mm-hmm. Got to mop the floors when they leave. And mm-hmm. stuff like that. <laughs> you know. Um, and it's like, you know, she's, uh, she also let me know about um, staying, how can I say, active. Um, yeah. How can I say, this has been like a ghost um, rehab or a lot of my bad habits type thing being in this apartment. <laughs> And I'm okay. going to say it, it, it works well because it lets me know the energy work that I'm doing also can affect me, can affect me if I'm not eating right, if I'm not um, taking care of myself properly. Mm-hmm. So all the things that I was doing outside this apartment when I brought it in here, it's a no. It's a no. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all right now how how weird it sound. Um, how weird it sounds, it really does feel like that she works with me on that, okay? She um, makes sure that I don't smoke too much, or she makes sure that I uh, clean up, or she, yeah. or she'll she make herself known, and, um, but she works with me, and that's weird for me, because it's something that I've never really just experienced, and which is why I started looking into like you know death work necromancy mm-hmm. and stuff like that because working with the dead this is working with me because she's her, her name is um i think mary i ain't gonna say my, her name i keep hearing mary um her name is mary and i keep hearing it over and over again so she's really sweet old lady nice so um when you picked that place did you feel her energy there or was it just something inviting that drew you to move there um the weird thing is that um this apartment um i got by out of like literally last minute i was um in between places um spending my money at hotels um and like i said that's when i'm borrowing on this and third um and it's like um i was spelling out for apartments they were saying no getting rejected here and there this was like last minute and of course, it was nice. It had running air. I'm sorry. Okay. In Jackson, Mississippi, if you, you have running air, you're, you know, it's, it's a blessing. Okay. <laughs> so it had running air. And um, I didn't, I I knew it was going to be the best decision because I, I read my tarot cards on it. However, it's like, it, it just felt good to be, be in my own space mm-hmm. because I'm, I had roommates. So it was really by force, you know, like I got to get somewhere. Otherwise, I'm not going to have no money to save. <laughs> and but when I got here and I start paying attention to what's in front of me because this is a place of stillness for me mm-hmm. um, I started noticing things around me that actually benefited um, that could benefit me for all of this and it just started working with me this, this apartment is amazing okay it is amazing it's old it's very old okay you got the cracks okay not the best apartment, okay, but it's um, I am drawn to this. It, I am drawn to the energy here, okay. And, but at the same time, I'm I'm drawn. I'm getting drawn somewhere else, okay. You know, so yeah, it, it, it it's an experience. It's an experience. So I I caught that you said you had worked with, you kind of had experiences with paranormal since you were a kid, um. So have you always been able to talk to others that have passed away or did you turn it off at some point or did you not even know you could until something hit you? Uh, I knew I saw like ghosts like growing up. Okay. Staying at an old house. Um, it was things that I did let me know that I had a lot of energy 
So it's like creaking on the floors and stuff like that. It was foot, it was footsteps. Also, me seeing um, like little light images, like probably in the window still, I'll see um, the image of a man. You know, that's what I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I remember seeing. Or when I was by a cemetery, I saw um, a light skipping back and forth. It, it, it looked like a little girl. Um, for a minute, I did cut it up. For a minute, I wasn't like paying attention because I was in relationships. Um, young, college, yeah. you know, girl, we turn yeah. it up, having fun and stuff. Yeah, working and stuff. So it wasn't until, um, like I said, actually falling on my butt, okay? Yeah. Um, into a place of, having to um, sleep on couches and stuff like that to where I start paying attention to what's in front of me rather than um, anything else. And it's like, I got more and more in tune. It's stronger and stronger, the more bullshit I went through. Because now it's like the rose colored glasses are off. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's nothing good in this world, you know. So it's just kind of like, yeah, that that that's what raised my intuition back all over again. Being a mother, all that that too. Because I saw somebody say, "Sounds like Mary enjoys your vibe and energy." I love that. So <laughs> I, that's that one thing that I wish you liked to. That's one thing that yeah. I found is. Um, so I grew, I grew up going to all these, my parents were very big and like, let's go here, let's go here, like paranormal plays. And we were taught to respect. So like, sometimes I have an issue with people. No, I don't have an issue. That's the wrong words, but I don't agree with people that are like, oh, all the spirits have to pass over. All of them have to cross over. I'm like, they literally don't. Like They literally don't. Like if they're here to mm-hmm. do something, like if somebody had forced her out of that place, you wouldn't have her. there to help like when I feel like I need to live in this place I need to go to this place I need to be like I do it even if I'm like I don't want to live there though like I don't want to live there you know but it ends up being the best thing at the time for for some reason or another but the one I did think it was funny you said like when some people leave with with their team you know I gotta mop the fucking floor um (laughs) because I don't think people understand that when you start working with any type doing any type of work with people that have passed away especially mediumship work or whatever. I'll tell people all the time. I'm like, your people won't fucking leave me alone. Like they need to go. Like you need to take them home with you. I don't want them to stay here. Like, the, please, <laughs> please. So, I mean, and I get it. I get it because if I, if I was gone and I had somebody that, you know, could hear me, could see me, whatever. And, you know, I hadn't been able to talk to anybody for a while. I probably would want to stay too. Like, Hey, no, let's talk. Like I want to talk, but yeah, I'm like, y'all need to come get your people. Y'all, y'all need to get all your people because I need a break. All of them. <laughs> I need a break. Like they won't fucking leave. But I found that like, and I, I'm curious. I'm, I'm gonna be curious as you move and as you go forward and stuff like that. If you're drawn to places that heighten your abilities, because I, I found that I'm that same way. I'm drawn to places. <laughs> I used to hate wood floors. Like I wanted carpet because I'm like, no, 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 it's cold in the morning. Like I don't want wood floors. And now I'm like, I don't want fucking carpet. I need the wood. I need to be able to ground with the wood under my feet and sweep the shit away when people leave, you know. But I'm going to be curious to know if you're drawn to places that push you forward, that heighten your intuition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I'm, gonna listen, I'm like, besides Jackson, Mississippi, like, New Orleans is like my second home. I'm always drawn there. Our mailbox got a what the LaFleur, I can't pronounce it, the the same sign. Okay. Oh, the floor de on our there, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the floor I'm sorry, because I can't pronounce it. I try my best. Um I can only on sometimes. Mailbox. So I'm just happy mm-hmm. that it came out of my face right. <laughs> right. But it's like it's it's very uh it's on our mailbox. And I'm just very drawn to like, oh, New Orleans. That's like just me. I love Creole. I love Cajun. You know, um, it's like a second home to me. I always be drawn there. I'm drawn to Arizona for some reason. I don't know. 
So I'm drawn there. I'm drawn to certain places, but like it's more so outside of Jackson now. Okay. And it's weird. I guess the place is drawn here. I've done. It's no other place I need to go to to get my experience here. Yeah. But at the places I've been to, experiences, lessons, grateful, not happy about them, but blessed that I got through. <laughs> I understand that on a deep level. <laughs> that I got to um, but I, there are some places in Mississippi that I get drawn to a lot, like Big Spur for sure, because it's the most hunted um, sit down here. You know, we have what the Myrtle um, House. Um, it's it's you can even feel the energy as you go into Big Spur, um, like the war. You know, you can you can feel the energy there. So I get drawn there a lot too. Um, and for some odd reason, the only thing that I probably say I would love to discover on is the Witch of Yazoo City. Um, and if y'all haven't heard of that, so um, mm-hmm, she burned the whole town down. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Um, the Witch of Yazoo. Learn City, me, learn me. Here we go. <laughs> Look, here we go. Here, okay, so go story. So yeah, she um, what happened was she burned down the whole town. So um, basically witchcraft. You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. same, cut cut the girl head out type. You know, mm-hmm. um, she burned the town down. So, um, what? How she burned the town down was how they um, killed her because of what she was doing. Uh, I think she was. I don't know. If she was sleeping with somebody, but she was also like an outsider. Like you know, just that type of energy. Mm-hmm. Yes, the city is very small. Like I said, this is a re- religious state. Mississippi. So of course, back then they really took that seriously. They buried her. She got chains over her um, grave and everything. Um, but they said she burned the town down. Um, that's an, um, a legend I still have not even ran up on because I haven't been able to actually go there to figure it out. But it is real. And mm-hmm. um, sometimes I want to um, be drawn there to just see if I can't pick up on the energy of that. And plus, my family's from there. Like my uh, daddy's side okay. family's from. So that's also another thing that's kind of weird about that. So I just want to know, like, you know, I do get drawn there. But, uh, yeah, it, that's probably one of the places. And um, um, I heard Grenada, but I, I don't know where Grenada came from. But that's somewhere where I've been to. But it's very, it's in the country. So old, yeah, in the country type thing. So, yeah, not, nothing in a busy city. <laughs> I understand. I go back and forth. Like I, I live in Tulsa and I live kind of in the middle, but at the same time I live right by the Arkansas river. And so there's not, it's quieter where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, yeah. And like, I picked a place, the house I was drawn to rent. Cause I've only been here since August, but like, I have no neighbors behind me. Like, Hey buddy, that was nice and loud. I love you. <laughs> but I have no neighbors behind me. Like I never see the people over there and there's nobody there. Like it's, I feel like I'm in a bubble right here and I, I like it and I'm, I'm happy to stay. I'm happy to stay in the bubble because Tulsa has a lot of very, very heavy energetic places too. Like with the race riots and stuff like that and where they're finding all of this stuff up on Greenwood and everything like that. It's beautiful. But at the same time you go up there and I mean, it's just like something just hits you. Like, I mean, you just sit like that. Like I get to where I don't even like, going to some of those places anymore it just it's too heavy does that make sense it's too heavy so yeah yeah heavy heavy feeling do you feel like that when you go to some of the um some of the battlegrounds or you go across them or by them or places where really lots lots of deaths have happened um i feel like the energy of that you know more so like it's just the, it's just energy like do I feel do I see entities out there no I don't no no but as of just feeling the energy like of maybe hearing a cannonball yeah. in my ear yeah. yeah definitely like I can I can feel, feel it sometimes I can hear it and it and, and sometimes it is heavy mm-hmm. it is heavy because a lot of lives lost. Yeah. 
but you can definitely feel it. Yeah. I, um, being in Oklahoma, I go to Oklahoma city all the time. Um, and it wasn't until really just a couple of years ago that I went to the Oklahoma city bombing site because I just had never, I don't know, never wanted to go. Like I remember watching it have, you know, in high school and stuff, but I could only stay there for maybe 10 minutes or so. Like we walked around, we looked at the pond and it's, it's beautiful. The, the memorial is beautiful, but mm -hmm. like we, I was walking around with my oldest son, who's 23 now, but I was like, baby, I gotta go. Like, I gotta, I gotta go. I can't, I don't want to stay here anymore, you know? And so I know a lot of people that work with people that have passed away sometimes when it's almost overwhelming, when there's too many people there, it, it's, I don't know. I've learned to tap out pretty quickly. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'll stay at yeah. the edge. You know what I mean? Like I'll stay over here at the edge. Mm -hmm. I, just, I don't want to. So I don't like being around a lot of, I, I just like to be on the side. Like don't, not too many people around me. That's a lot of, yeah, energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can't, I can't even imagine being around a lot of uh, the civil war grounds over there all the time. It drains my energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It drains my energy. Yep, it does. Oh, there's a good question. Uh, mm -hmm. Bailey is asking, do you wear anything to protect yourself from certain energies? What, what um, do protection, you protection stones. So besides head wraps, um, wrapping your head, of course. Um, when you're doing readings or this and the third, um, I do have certain necklaces. <sighs> so do you um, put anything? Do you put anything in your wraps, or just the wraps? Any, um, yes, I do. Ameth uh, amethyst. Um, I do put lapis lazuli on my wrap. Um, in my wraps as well, and that's usually when I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. Um. As a, those are the only ones besides sleeping with selenite under my pillow or something like that. Um, <laughs> and um, usually I would probably create like I used to make bracelets. Mm -hmm. um, usually they'll have like little um, crystals in them as well in the center. So I probably have like a necklace with like a little pendulum. Um, I had a black tourmaline before um, bracelets as well. Um, evil eye necklaces. I don't have one right now. Um, my, um, but I suggest that everybody do go get one because um, it does protect between e uh, evil eye. But besides that, that's all I really much have to do besides saging myself and spiritual baths. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that somebody asked that <laughs> because a lot of times people, especially when they're newer, they don't know. And, um, so I have people all the time, like I, I, I'm only wearing one bracelet tonight, but I usually wear a whole bunch of shit. And I think some of it's because some of it's habit. Like, I'm like, okay, this bracelet goes here, this goes here, you know, like I have, like they all go in a separate way, whatever. But, and then some of them, like I've been missing my mom a lot lately. So I'm wearing a lot of my mom's jewelry lately. But when I first started my practice, it's like, okay, I need like all the black stones, every black stone that there is, I need on me. Like I need all of it. I need some armor. But now I'm kind of the point. There are some days I'm like, I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't understand that you can get to that point. And I'm like, you can once you get your energy right. So it sounds like you've kind of gotten to that point too, where you, you pretty much have your energy right, except a few times when you feel you really need it. Mm-hmm. I was looking yep. at questions here. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm like, what? What is it? Oh, that was an ugly. Look, I will I'm, never I do that again. <laughs> I cannot see very close. I can't see very far, so sometimes I have to like get up close. <laughs> well, you get close, and I'll get far, and we'll get them on. <laughs> We're gonna figure um, it out. Uh -oh. So I'm curious. Let's talk. Look, I want to talk about death work a little bit um, because it's something that. I do a lot of. So when you mentioned it, I was like, ooh, she wants to talk about the good shit. So I definitely want to talk about that a little bit. What's your opinion mm -hmm. on shungite for protection? Well, I mean, I, I wear a shungite pie stone. I don't wear it all the time, but I, I wear it most of the time. But it's mostly because I've been fucking up electronics lately, and I feel like I need it more for the EMF aspect than I do for the protection. I think the electronics need the protection from me, and that's why I wear it. I haven't broke TikTok tonight, knock on wood. So No. Uh, 
I think um one of the other songs I was wearing was um I forgot so um gosh it left me so quickly <laughs> I do that all the time I'm like uh it's like this big <laughs> I was also trying to talk because I was reading the comment and I was like uh yeah I was trying to answer the question um <laughs> it's gonna come back no it wasn't Tiger Stone it, it was a Tiger Stone uh. <laughs> it's like I do the same thing and then I'll be in the middle of like another sentence five hours later and I'm like it's that yeah uh, I, and that's how it is and that's how it is on, cause it was on the tip of my tongue but it's gonna come back it's gonna come back I, I, I was reading the question it was like did you did you ask for, um, did I ask for project so I was trying to see mm. that mm. do you <laughs> I have astro projected before. Yes, I have. Um, into the next room. <laughs> and what um, I have <laughs> I have mastered the astro project, uh, projection because for one, um, it does take um, you laying on your back and stuff like that. Me, I, I lay crazy. Okay, I'm gonna be on my back, end up on my stomach, on my back. It's just not gonna work for me, okay? My spirit guys gave up on me a long time ago about that. Um, lucid, <laughs> lucid dreaming, yes, I have done that before. They still gave up on me about that. <laughs> I lucid dream on my stomach, so it's like just, just give it up because that—that's like the step that you have to take in order to astro project. Which mm -hmm. I know that, but I can't do that if I'm laying on my stomach. <laughs> Suck. I love that you said the way you said it because there's so many people that are like, oh yeah, I'm just going to jump right into doing this. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's just like everything. Like there's, there's steps you have to take to go through first because, and the first is that you've done it. You're like, oh my God, I did it. And then you're right back in your body. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the vibration. Like if you know, like the vibration in your body, like all of a sudden you sound like, oh my God, it's happening. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, lucid man. dreaming is the same thing that's what I always tell people I'm like practice work toward it and the first I'm telling you right now the first time you do it you're going to realize oh my god I'm dreaming and I can do whatever I want and then you're going to wake up because your brain just realized that you're dreaming so you know so yeah uh, what if you do it without trying what astral projecting or lucid dreaming some people have interesting brains and they're just um they're just used to it. They're used to traveling. So it's normal. Like that's when I was actually talking to a friend of mine this morning. Um, if I listen to, cause so I have epilepsy, I have the broken brain and I travel continually in my sleep. And then I wake up even more tired than I went to bed. So if I listen to frequencies to like the sulfagio frequencies or even just anything at all that rain, rain is another good, I can listen to rain and I'll stay here and sleep, but I don't dream. And so I got up this morning, like four or five o'clock to go pee. And I turned my phone off and I had the weirdest fucking dream. And I woke up and I'm like, stupid. Like, this is why you turn your, don't turn your phone <laughs> off. But we were talking about that, about um, people that naturally do those things and what they do to keep themselves here. Um, I think it's just a matter because since somebody asked, um, it's just a matter of finding what works for you because everybody's brain, everybody's brain is different. Just like everybody's brain is different when it comes to astral projecting, to lucid dreaming, to any of that. So what allows you to do that is also going to like the opposite of it is going to allow you to stay here. So I've learned that I can sit like I no longer have to smoke anything or drink anything or whatever to travel. I can do I can do some breath work and I'm there. So at the same time, like I have to shut my brain up so I can actually sleep because it will do its own fucking thing. So um, I hope that answered your question because I, I saw that was an interesting question. Um, but I do want to talk about death work a little bit because somebody and when I mentioned that a second ago. So so she asked about talking about it and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to talk about it. Um, yeah. And I can't, I can't stay too much longer. I got about I got about 20 minutes and I got to I got to go for I got to go. Um so somebody asked about if death work is um, working with people that have passed over, kind of. Death work is a term that encompasses working with people that have already passed away, that are in the active process of passing away, um, all sides of it. It's almost, it's 
pretty much another term for being a death doula and a necromancer. It's just like all of that in one. Um, so I'm curious, since you since you brought it up, what is it? What is it that draws you to learn more about it, or that that you wanted to talk about with it? It's something I've done most of my life. So when you, I was like, yes, yes, let's talk about it. <laughs> I want to know. Well, what what draw me to it was like, it's like one of the things that I've heard, first of all, was like being a deaf witch. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, being a deaf witch, um, something, a term that I, I must say that I didn't really just know about it until I got deeper and deeper into my journey. Um, that if you've had um, numerous like um, near-death experiences, for instance, okay. you could be a deaf witch. Because you done had like a a, a, a swift of death, you know. Yeah. Um, not only that, you know, this is what I heard. However, but either way, it's just I know I had a near death experience that brought me to that, you know, to where I was connected to the dead more. Because, like I said, been in situations more and more, kind of hide my intuition. It kind of mm-hmm. just woke me, made me more sensitive. So yeah. Um, with death, with death magic and stuff like that, or you know, um, working with the dead, it, it, it takes a lot of respect. That's what it does. It takes a lot of respect mm-hmm. because of the simple fact that when you're working with dead people, you want to be aware that this is somebody's grandparents, this is somebody's um, auntie, this is mm-hmm. somebody who was once with. Even if you are working with you know bad people, you know, because some people do do death work with, you know, if you just know about it, do it with. Um, you know, but depending who you do your research on, mm-hmm. um, it's all about respect. Okay. Um, at the same time, you know, it is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I want to put that out there. It's not for mm-hmm. everybody. Okay. So if anybody trying to say you're talking about, Ooh, it sounds fun or all of that. Haha, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not fun. I'm, I'm sitting here saying it to y'all. In, in, in the sweetest way, in the funniest way. So you can laugh about it, but take me seriously, okay? Yeah. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's draining, okay? It's very draining, mm-hmm. but exhilarating. Exhilarating, mm-hmm. but draining. But yeah. draining. But at the same time, you know, um, rewarding, especially mm-hmm. when using it. Rewarding. Um, mm-hmm. If y'all are into hexes and stuff rewarding i can't say for personal experience it's not gonna go there but i'm just saying that's why i said it's not for everybody because um some people's not some people not ready for that heat i'm not ready for that heat half the time they be trying to push me and i'd be like no but i'm i'm, I'm taking it slow yeah. so but what, I, what i've experienced lately oh <laughs> I love that you I love that you put the disclaimers on it because that's the same thing I do when I when I'm asked about it when I'm asked about doing mediumship work when I'm asked about being a death doula when I'm asked about things like that and I had somebody ask me um, because I just because in doing what I've done this for a long time and so I've worked with a lot of people that were actively you know in at the end of a terminal illness and things like that and so everybody's like I want to do this I want to I'm like you don't you truthfully you don't you don't because you have to be the strong person and you cannot show emotion on any side period because you have to be mm-hmm. strong for the person that's passing you have to be strong for their family afterwards you have to be strong once they come to you and are like okay ex- explain help explain i want to talk to my husband i want to talk to my wife i want to talk to my kids like because you're their tether here and so they come to talk to you and then you have the other ones that want to come in and talk to you. And so you have to shut everything out and then you end up shutting the people out. But I tell people, I'm like, I don't even think there's a word for how draining it actually is. Even not, not just when you start out, but on, on any aspect of it, I've been doing it a long time. And I get mm-hmm. to the point where I'm like, y'all, I just, I can't, I just can't today. I can't, not that I don't want to. I just can't like, I don't have the energy. I can't. So I love that you put that disclaimer on there that it's not for everybody because one of the, this is one of the things I hate. I love hate about social media is that some, it gets to trending and everybody's like, Oh my God, I want to do that. And I'm like, you 
you don't <laughs> like you don't mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. and so like that's the other thing you mentioned about the like ouija boards and so on mm -hmm. i take I was taught when i was younger the proper ways to open them to close them like how to set up and so i've over the years perfected all my stuff like i hand make them i burn them into leather and stuff so they can easily be rolled up and and so on and so it kind of cracks me up sometimes people are like well i'm really afraid of them and i'm like why because of hollywood or because you know like why as long as it's just like any tool you should be afraid of a nail gun <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. i mean like but as long as you use it safely and you do you do what you're supposed to do like you're not going to shoot yourself in the damn leg with a nail same thing with a ouija war like when i put it in that aspect you're like oh okay mm -hmm. It's just a tool, right? It's just a divination tool. And the problems come when people don't know what they're doing or they don't pay attention or they leave the bitch open or they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm talking to grandma. And I'm like, it's literally not to grandma. <laughs> like they told it's you they not to grandma. So it's yeah. not Mim mimicking spirits, mimicking spirits, mimicking entities. Y'all, they will literally mimic everything to everybody. If you think you are trying to contact the, the, the ghost of, for instance, Michael Jackson or something like that, mm -hmm. you, you'll be surprised. Uh, that's not him. Yeah. That's not him. Yeah. That's I mean, it's going to tell you it's him all day long. But <laughs> it's not him. No. no. But it's not him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how I got my pet demon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not him. That's what he did. Yeah, that's exactly how you get a pet demon. Yep, yep. Fun fact: that was my first concert ever. Was Michael Jackson? Really? Yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I've never been to a Michael Jackson concert, and I, I hate you. And I love it. <laughs> I hate you. I love it. Yeah, my my dad's I boss. Him. I want to say I was like eight eight or nine and my dad's boss got tickets because his daughter wanted to go and he didn't want to take her so he was like hey you've got a daughter her age do you want these tickets you know and take my daughter and so my dad was like okay so yeah I got to see him at like the Denver Coliseum and it, I, we were super far up in the nosebleeds but it was fantastic but yeah I know my dad hated every minute of all these <laughs> screaming kids around like I know I know he hated every minute of it but he took it oh my so, <laughs> And then we were leaving because um, my dad also taught me the fine art of leaving a concert just a little early to miss all the shit. And so we were leaving and found out that our car got blocked in like they packed the parking lot. And so there mm -hmm. were we had just happened to park up against a fence and um, there were the guys on the other side of the fence that I guess in this um, auto body shop or whatever. And I don't know what they were doing, but. My dad like paid him a hundred bucks to take the fence, to roll the fence, to move the fence so we could get out. Because <laughs> he was like, and this was in the eighties, so like that was a lot of money. So I'm like, so I'm wow. looking back now, I'm like, my dad literally paid someone to move a fucking fence so we could leave. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's how bad yeah. the man wanted to leave. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> that is <was> hilarious. <laughs> but it's a great Jesus. concert. I mean, I remember even at eight, it was a great concert. So yeah. So yeah, it has to be. <laughs> oh my God, did he perform? Like, did he perform? Like, like, what's your favorite Michael Jackson? Song? Like, what's your favorite song? Oh God, oh God, like, what's your I gotta ask me that. So at the time, Bad had just come out, so everybody wanted to hear that, and so that was like completely the big thing. So I remember that one. I don't remember a lot of the concert. That's what sucks. Is like with. So with the, the epilepsy and the damage, like a lot of my long-term memories are just like holes or black, but I remember that. And I remember uh, you could see the fucking glitter off of that glove all the way up in the fucking nosebleed. Oh it my God. So cool. It was so cool. Oh my God. So yeah, it was fantastic. Like that in my mind, like my eight year old mind, like that's what stuck out the most was that glove and that all that sequence on it. And the, the Yeah. It was fantastic. But yeah, everybody, I remember everybody around us like screaming the words to bad when he was singing. Yeah, it was fantastic. Mm. <laughs> I'm so fantastic. jealous. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, always love loved, I always loved Billie Jean and I always loved Smooth Criminal. And yeah. Yeah. All those. All the I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of a, okay, I like Dirty Diana. You no, know, oh, I like Dirty okay. Diana. Like, do you remember the times? Yeah. And so I'm more of that type of person. <laughs> so I I usually prefer the ones that have the more upbeat because I, I like to move and stuff. And because 
I really get affected by music on a deep level. So the ones that are like the lower, slower songs, I got to be in the mood. I got to be in the mood for some of the deeper, heavier songs. But yeah, yeah, I mm. always love me some Michael Jackson. I always love me some Michael Jackson. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I loved it growing up when my kids would find things like that. And they're like, did you know about this? And I'm like, yeah, like I grew up in the 80s, man. Yeah, I knew all of that shit, you know. But, if you don't know, then you, 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 I don't know, you're missing that because he's like one of the best entertainers ever. So, yeah. Yeah. You should yeah. I, yeah, I agree with that. Even, I mean, even though I didn't have anything else to compare it to, like now I do as an adult, but like even then, I knew it was an amazing concert. Like, I, the lights and everything set up and just the, the energy and the performance, like, I've been to some concerts now. Everybody's like, oh, this is a great concert. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, they're just, like, sitting there on a stool. Like, this is terrible. So, yeah. I mean, just the energy. I can't even imagine how much energy is expended in a performance like that. Like, uh. I can't even imagine. But, yeah, even as a kid, I, I was blown away. It was, I was just, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere, I actually have a 1987 Michael Jackson doll. I have it put up. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yes. crocheted, I crocheted me like a zombie Michael Jackson doll. Yes. Like <laughs> I did because I was like, I'm, I'm such a fan. And I'm like, I'm just going to see how, how I can do it. And I, and when I completed it, I was like, yes, I'm going to leave you in this box and never touch you because I don't want you to get messed up ever again. <laughs> so yeah, he's like in a box somewhere, but I, I did it. His like skin is green and stuff. It's, it's, it's really nice. I can't believe you crocheted that. That's awesome as shit. <laughs> yeah, there's like a little voodoo doll slash zombie slash Michael Jackson doll. So yeah, oh I, I tried God. to add a twist to it. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know how much I don't know how much it'd be worth because I kept the glove. Like I, it's yeah, I have the jacket on him. I have the glove. I have his little shoes. So yeah, but like I don't know. That was a big part of my childhood. I see why people hold on to shit forever because. As a kid, I was like, oh, this was my favorite doll. And he's got, like, the yellow eyes. It was, like, the thriller one. So he's got, like, the yellow eyes and the red jacket. And so, um, yeah, it creeped me out as a kid. Like, the doll itself is creepy. I'm not going to lie. The the eyes are humongous and yellow. Like, it's creepy as shit. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, I wouldn't get rid of it now, like, for anything. So I guess when I die, they can get rid of it. All the money, though. No, yeah. he was amazing. Yeah, he was amazing. He was very creative. Very creative. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't even imagine how that man's brain worked. Like when you think about how Prince's brain worked, and like you know, all the songs he put out, and how Michael Jack. I can't even imagine being around them in a create like when they're really on creatively. So, yeah, it's something I would like to experience. Some of those people like that, you know, Bowie and. Freddie Mercury and stuff when they were really, really on creatively, I would have, I would have loved to just sit there and just pay attention. Does that make sense? Like just sit there and experience that process, that energy. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that everybody's like, like, oh my God. Prince. Yeah. And they're saying Prince, Prince. Yeah. I'm yeah. a Prince fan. He was forced to me. Yeah. I'm a Prince fan too. Mm-hmm. He's he's more he I'm I'm a fan of him on a spiritual level though like his music Thanks. is great his music is great but him as a person like just his transformation period just to assemble to represent mm -hmm. his masculine feminine side is like a win win for me I'm sorry yeah so like you I, know I, I agree yeah, yeah I think everybody cried when yeah yeah. What was the first book you mentioned that people raised Southern Baptist to read? Oh, from earlier? Um, the book I mentioned earlier is Backwoods Witchcraft by Jake Richards. Um, it's it's a book I recommend to almost anybody, especially if you're coming out of either being a Christian your whole life and having an issue with, uh, you know, trying to figure yourself out spiritually. Um, it's a great book. It's a great mm. book. Yeah. So... We got off. We got off track with <laughs> with death work. We got on the Michael we Jackson. Did. Oh, I'm sorry. We did. <laughs> I'm like, how we are you on music. talking about Michael Jackson? <laughs> oh no, like that's weird. Welcome to my life. <laughs> this is what happens. I'm like, all right, back up, bitch. What were you talking about? Like five minutes ago. I don't know where his energy count. He needs to. He needs to back up. 
back up. He always like to talk about. I mean. <laughs> well, so everybody can book on your y'all. I want every single one of y'all better go better go follow. So so they can book on your profile. You, have a you can book on your profile. Okay, good. Good. So you yes. do you do lives anymore? I know you said you haven't uh, done one in a while. Girl, yeah, I haven't done a live in a while. Oh, I, I mean, I kind of been off and on the past year and stuff like that, but it's mostly I took some time off um, doing some self reflecting um, over the, and it's it's something that my spirit guide set me down to. Um, and it's like pep preparation. Y'all know manifestation, mm -hmm. you got to pre uh, prepare, you know, so it's just kind of like reflecting on the year before, which it went through. What you're trying to manifest? Are you ready for it? This is the year to sit my butt down, you know, <laughs> and actually um, reflect on it and make sure that what I want is what I want, what I don't want is what I don't want, mm -hmm. and what I need to take action towards versus what I need to step back from. And gotcha. so, me, I'm I took a step back from lives. Um, I still will do them and stuff like that. Um, it's just lately I kind of been um, in and out of. Uh, you know, trying to find a job right now because at the same time, you know, I got to be grounded. But um, at this um, and then on top of that, with everything going on on um, TikTok, you know, my, I think my lives were banned for like a month and a half. A Holy time. shit! And like, I think that was, that was the last time they like literally was gonna ban my life for a whole month. And I really was not laughing long. I was just terrible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why I was like, you know, I kind of just made back from that because I'm like, it's like somebody. Yeah, man, I'm not about to lose my life. Yeah. Over this. So I just kind of took a step back. And when it happened again, I'm like, okay, Spirit trying to tell me something that maybe I need to hold off for a minute. There's something going on. Or, you know, so, um, yeah, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get slowly back into it. I just want to, um, how can I say, in my ducks in a row, in my life, moving forward with my content so yeah sooner or later y'all gonna be seeing better feedback on them doing lives and readings and stuff okay i just know that some people were asking earlier so i wanted to mention it again so you guys can go book with her so i love i love listening to you read for people so <laughs> you know, i still do reading so you know so people still book me so i still do past life all those readings and okay just Taking it slow because it's a lot of energies on here, and it's just like slow it down, sis. You be tired as I don't know what by the end of the day. Yep. Can't even make nothing to eat now. You now you up there trying to just eat on some chips, making us a meal. Time I mean, to bed. I feel like you're calling me on my bullshit right here because <laughs> I do the same no, thing. I'm uh -huh. like <laughs> that's what I struggle with. I swear, I I struggle with that sometimes. It's like I will be. I'll do a lot of tarot readings. Sometimes it'll be a lot of tarot readings, but it'd be like there's a lot of energy being used. Mm -hmm. And it's like, just take a step back. That's why it's like, you know, you need to you need to eat. I'm like, I'll be tired of eating. You need to cook. I'll be tired of cooking. I'll be up mm -hmm. at 12 something at night cooking a meal, tired as I don't know what, making myself eat because I I, pro I need to. So I have mm -hmm. to make myself. So yeah, but it Bounce, is. You be quiet. I see you down there. I see you down there. Hey, in case, and queso um, and charcuterie boards are live. Y'all shut up. I saw that shit coming to chips and queso. <laughs> they make fun of me because that's mostly what I eat is chips and queso and charcuterie boards. But at least my charcuterie boards have fruit and cheese and meat. So shut up. <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> I'm listening. So, yeah, they're getting on to me. See that? They're like, are you listening to her? Because I eat like shit. Hey, DoorDash knows me by heart. Y'all shut up. <laughs> Y'all shut up. <laughs> no, oh, look, I'm trying to eat healthier, so DoorDash have to give me some vegan places and stuff. So, yeah. Well, if you, yeah. Ever, if you ever come to Tulsa, there is a an amazing place downtown that um, the owner, it's, it's Mexican, but it's not Tex-Mex. So, it's not, like, they have some shit that will, like, burn a hole in your mouth. It's so hot. But um they Whoa. have the lady is um vegan and so she has all these vegan options like she has um, vegan queso and it's made with um cashews and it's delicious oh my god it's so good but they have puffy tacos where they have these ladies here that hand make the dough and then they deep fry it so it's almost like an indian taco but it's little 
holy shit mm-hmm. fuck it's so good it's so good so if you ever come down i'll buy you dinner <laughs> oh god yes I, that sounds like delicious to me like i'd I offer to bring him next because i'll be coming through there i see i go to nashville in may so i'll be coming i'll be coming through that area like it wouldn't take much to swing but i don't know how well they sit in the car for like a day it'd probably be a little narcy <laughs> Yes, because like when you come back through here, definitely you need to like come visit and stuff yes. like that because you were definitely down the street for me. And I'm like, I'm sitting here still like in awe because I'm like, wait, you were literally right over there. Like we kind of said something to each other. So yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely we to come stayed, We stayed at the, um, I want to say it was a Hilton. I don't remember, but it's right downtown. Big, huge marble. Oh my God. It was beautiful inside. It was so pretty. It was so pretty. So, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, where is, where is everybody? Like, it's a Saturday. Like, where's everybody? Nobody was down there. It was crazy. It was crazy. So, yeah. But it was hot as fuck. <laughs> it was hot mm-hmm. as fuck. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. like, inside, in the, in the cool. That's where everybody's at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I get it. Wow. It gets so hot here in the summer times. I'm like, this is dumb. Like, I understand why old people migrate like go to Florida and then up to like Michigan in the summer. I get it. I will be one of those old people. I'm just going to like, like a little bird just travel back and forth. Cause yeah, I can't do the heat or the cold anymore. I'm done. I'm out. I'm, I've reached that mm-hmm. point in life. I'll give a shit. I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm tapping. Bye. See you later. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you guys. So yeah, I got to get off here and go uh, hang out with my kid for a minute and all the things and happy birthday again thank thank you thank you so much another fellow return for me so i'm blessed and yes, so, so what what happy. level did you reach what level are you now 32 i know i know i'm i'm tripping out like girl you're not you're nothing 32. <laughs> but it's nice you know what's funny 30 didn't bother me. 31 bothered me tremendously. And I can't explain why it was just all of a sudden I was like, Oh my God, I'm over 30. I think that realization hit me. But when I hit 40, I was so fucking stoked to hit 40. I couldn't stand myself. And then where there's an ice storm and I didn't even get to celebrate my 40th birthday. And I was pissed. Mm. (laughs) And now I'm like, yes, level 46. (laughs) So yeah, I'm all about it. Now, yeah. I think when I hit like 48, I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to be 48. <laughs> yes, man. Look, I'm, I'm getting on up there, girl. But I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying Asian. I'm enjoying the age. I'm Asian. Like Asian like wine. Just getting fine. Exactly. Exactly. Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, All right. I will send you a message because I would love to send you a birthday present. Oh, I mean, thank just spir- you. spiritual goodies, but I would love to send you a birthday present. <laughs> oh, girl, you did not have to. I would appreciate that. I really would. Thank you. Well, oh, that definitely made my birthday like so much better. <laughs> well, I will send you a message here in a little bit, and yeah, I would love, I would love to send you some some goodies that I think you would enjoy. Oh, thank you. Okay, girl. Because you make me happy. I, I, every, every time I see your videos, I have to sit and watch them and then fall down the rabbit hole nerding on your videos. <laughs> so <laughs> you make me happy, and I would love to send you something for your birthday. Thank you so much. Look, more <laughs> content is coming out soon, so yeah, I'm going to keep that rolling. So y'all can stay <laughs> laughing. We got to keep laughing during these times. Uh, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> well, All right, girl. I will let you go. Have a good time. Tell your friend I said hi and bye over there. So, <laughs> bye, bye, girl. I'll see, I'll you, see later. you guys later. Having you on your live. Yes, yes. We'll have to do this again because I I enjoyed having you on. <laughs> All right, girl. All bye, right, y'all. I will see you guys later. Y'all have a good evening. Bye. bye. <laughs>